Hello and welcome to Countdown to Power with me, Graham Price. Social media really is a double-edged sword, isn't it? The Tories and their supporters and media hacks are very fond of using its blade to divide and deceive us, but it could equally be used to cut through a lot of media bullshit. Of all the different flavours of social media, YouTube is my favourite, obviously. I've moved away from Facebook a lot since I started this channel, but I do find myself getting some sort of grim pleasure from watching the absolute state of the gutter level exchanges that happen on Twitter these days. It's kind of it's kind of like when you drive past a car crash and you can't help looking even though you know you might see something horrible. Or when two people start arguing in the pub and everyone goes quiet, waiting to see if Mad Mick from the estate is going to get slapped for calling Dave's missus a fat slag. Well, Twitter is like the social media version of that. Well, it is for me anyway, but you know I'm mostly looking at political stuff. Lee Anderson is a proliferant twat of Twitter. And Susan Hall, the most ridiculous mayoral candidate the Tories have ever put forward, is literally on there every 15 minutes with another blatant lie about Sadiq Khan and her imaginary paper mile scheme. Check her out, she's hilariously dishonest. She gets community fact-checked multiple times per day and has things added to her post saying that she's telling lies. And yet she comes back the very next day straight on posting the exact same lies. Unbelievable. I derive quite a lot of personal joy from seeing people like Susan receive 14,000 comments saying shut up you lying hag but what really does tend to get through cheer me up and make me day is a really well made funny and relevant meme hmm. one that makes me stop and think or makes me laugh or ideally does both I often save them as well I'm a prolific meme stealer and I have a file of them so I thought I'd jump into the file and share the ones I find most provoking, shocking, stupid or hilarious. And we'll get right into it after this. Hey, sorry to interrupt, just a quick interjection. The best way to help the channel and beat the algorithms is to hit the like button, leave a comment when we're done and subscribe if you haven't already. If you really want to help the channel then hit the join button below or make a donation through PayPal or buy me a coffee. The links are in the description box. It's all very much appreciated indeed. Thank you. There are of course some memes that are topical and will only work or be funny at a certain time or in relation to certain topics. There are some that are a bit more useful, a bit more wide ranging though, such as this one. I've been seeing a lot of people post this one in response to conservative crybabies who have a Union Jack in their profile picture and are vomiting bile all over Twitter, desperately searching for a copium dealer. I had this one filed under terrified gammon. Mm. It manages to be quite effective without even using any words. There are no copium dealers anymore, gammon lad. Your Brexit shite, you're going down. It's only a one star meme though because it isn't particularly clever and I suppose it is just a bit rude, isn't it? Mm. There are some memes that manage to be offensive to a particular order of knob shafts though, but occasionally might make just one of them stop to think, oh my god, is that what I actually look like? I'd like to think this is one of those. This is one that you often see in Suella Braverman's vile Twitter feed, and it's pretty obvious when it was put together, but the picture that's been used is quite common, it's been used a lot of times. I don't know who that guy is, but he better have his blood pressure checked, because his head looks like rotten gammon sliding off his skull, doesn't it? It's a bit mean though, and there's probably loads of decent fellas that look like that, and it's not their fault. So, I'm giving this one two stars. Of course, there are people who are obsessed with their own personality or the personality they want to pretend that they have. And they're the type of people that are often very proliferant on social media. Jacob Rees-Mogg is absolutely no exception. This is one that you'll often see being beautifully displayed among the cesspools of the comments sections below Mr. Mogg's tweets. Now, it certainly couldn't take the top spot. It does contain two words that are rather taboo and I don't want any daft bastards to be fucking offended by the language used in it so I'm holding it back slightly even though it's quite a good one. Three stars. Sometimes the starkest point can be made in the most simple ways though and while this one also has a little bit of sweariness I think it's used in a much more intelligent way. The we should look after our own brigade are the obvious targets of this one and it's well deserved. 
I think this one is really good though. The simple and bold illustration is eye-catching, but then the use of the fuck off is just a little bit alarming. It makes you think about the point of it, the hypocrisy of it, if only for a few seconds. Thing is, it's got the funny because it's true factor though, hasn't it? And it isn't really that funny, is it, when you think about it properly? You shouldn't have kids starving in Britain. So, you know, that kind of knocks it off the top spot. Four stars. Some memes really do just catch me off guard and make me laugh out loud. And when you live on your own with just two ancient, smelly dogs for company, a laugh out loud is a, it's a precious thing. Hence why I'm calling this my meme of the month. It really is perfection, isn't it? A, a simple and bold image with an insightful and direct phrase. And of course... The sheer truism of it is shrewd and effective too. Rishi Sunak is indeed a massive helmet. And this meme displays that he is indeed a massive helmet with startling and memorable clarity. There can be no doubt that on the first day that this meme was posted, there were many thousands of people up and down this great country of ours who stopped just for a moment and thought, Rishi Sunak, yeah, he is a massive helmet. And that is a beautiful thing, which is why I'm calling this my five-star meme of the month. Thank you very much for watching if you've gotten this far. Please hit like and subscribe if you've had a giggle with me, and let me know what you think in the comments section. You can find my email address in the description box, and you're welcome to send me any of your memes, or you know ones that made you laugh, or, or ones that you think made a good point. And you'll also find the link to PayPal, Patreon, and the Buy Me A Coffee page over there as well. I thought I'd leave you with this. 30p Lee has been out campaigning again. Can you spot the little problem? How about now? Yeah. Apparently Lee is so incompetent and stupid that he didn't actually check the content of his own campaign leaflets and failed to notice that they'd spelled his name wrong. Or did he notice, but he's just so slovenly and lazy that he said, oh, bloody hell, it's too late now. We'll just have to use him anyway. Yeah. Apparently nobody in Reform UK has the sense to check their promotional material before accepting it from the publishers. I don't know how anyone thinks they can run a country if they can't even get their own propaganda leaflets correct. Anyway, the country is collapsing around us. We've got the worst government since the days of Cromwell and a few million idiots think Nigel Farage is the answer. But you've got to laugh, haven't you? It's easier for us lot to laugh than it is for Union Jack Gammon lad back there. Because we're the ones who know, we're watching our countdown to power. Couldn't go without showing you this. Look, Jonathan Seagull. <laughs> Jonathan Seagull is. <laughs> Apparently he hates it when people use this picture. <laughs>